Hi there everyone, welcome back up to We're Yard in the Loft. It's great to have you along, always nice to have your company. And today it's, it's supposed to be a Friday update video, but actually I haven't actually done an awful lot on the layout. I've been so busy doing other things that I thought I'd do something a little bit different today. And I've been asked by a few people following on from the uh, uh, complete collection guide to diesel locomotives, steam locomotives, in fact, there's so many of those, I had to do parts one and two. And um, I'm not going to do a full tour just yet of my full um, goods rolling stock collection. I think that would take far too long. I have got, um, I, I don't know, I haven't really counted them, but I'd suspect there's probably four to five hundred wagons and uh, probably a couple of hundred coaches as well. So I thought what I'd do instead is run you through my top ten favourite wagons at this time. First up, this was a special commission from TMC. They've done a few of these, and it's based on the Backman Conflat wagon. But they did it in the livery, which is a, sort of a shunter's match wagon. Now, the story behind these was that in certain places where the Class 3s, Class 4s, maybe even Class 5s worked, they were too short to be able to properly trigger track circuits. So they tended to get paired up with another wagon. And uh, the idea of this was that the pair of them combined would be long enough that they wouldn't just disappear into the track circuits and sort of become lost potentially in the uh, signal box um, circuitry and uh, these wagons would have been seen places like Norwich, Ipswich, um, I think as well uh, Newcastle as well. I'm sure I've seen pictures of class 3 shunters paired with wagons such as these and they weren't necessarily always a conflat it was really just a case of whatever old wagon was lying around and I think in some instances they were just literally a wagon chassis um, but these wagons came to the market from TMC. They had been commissioned in the past. I think Pennine Models did the very first one a long, long time ago when the Conflats first came out. But subsequently, TMC had uh, taken up the mantle and they brought out this popular and very useful wagon a number of times. I know I've got three of these uh, all through TMC, all with different running numbers. But I've picked out the one that was supplied factory weathered by Backman and uh, I've picked that as the number 10 in my list. Number nine in my list is a bit of a new entry I suppose. I only just recently reviewed these wagons and it's the Acura Scale HUO Hopper Wagon. We did the full box opening and review treatment on these and then subsequently I got asked to do a weathering video so showed you a really cost effective and quite easy method of getting this rather nice effect on the wagons and really brings out the detail and I just fell in love with the every aspect of these wagons. They might be mundane freight wagons in real life but uh, in model form the Acura scale model really did just blow me away and uh, the more I got to look at these and handle them and then the more I, I really just found that I thought that they were the epitome of the freight wagons available ready to run. So it's probably no surprise, given all of that, that uh, Acura Scale won my heart with this wagon and uh, got into my top 10 favourite wagons with this at number 9. At number 8, this wagon, well, it's uh, a Backman ventilated van. It's the plywood-sided ventilated van. Uh, but as you can see here, it's in Engineer's Olive Green. And I really do have a soft spot for the olive green livery. Now, this van was the first to reach the market in this livery, and it came as a special commission at the time from Model Rail magazine. It was billed as being a pocket money wagon that said you could buy it with uh, a much more reasonable amount of money than a lot of other special commissions had been coming out. It was simply a relivery of the wagon which had uh, just recently entered the Bankman stable. But it was a very welcome addition for the likes of me. I already had the ZHV uh, 16 ton mineral wagon in the green livery, which had been brought out 
as rather a strange addition to the main range quite early on. I hadn't necessarily sold well, I did get one, uh, but we had to wait probably in the region of 10 to 15 years before Backman reissued that wagon. But this particular wagon, coming from Model Rail, was a very welcome addition. It did subsequently make the main range uh, the planked version. So this does remain unique. I'm not aware of Backman having re-released this at all. But uh, I'm putting it in at number eight in my top ten favourite wagons because being the first, it always has a special place in my collection. And number seven, maybe this is a bit of a strange choice. Um, I think some people would be looking at this and going, and what's so special about this? But what you actually have to do is go right back to my early collecting with my father, with his collection of Hornby Double O. And if you know Hornby Double O, you know that Southern Railway uh, tin plate wagons are really quite rare and very difficult to find. Certainly back in the day, they were almost impossible to find. And so when you did find them, they were something special for the collection. My father and I managed to get all bar the ventilated van in the Hornby Double O tin plate range. And the open wagon, five plank open wagon that Hornby Double O did, was one that uh, we still remember the day that we picked up our one and only example. Actually from Hatton's, it had been misfiled with a big pile of LMS wagons, which is a pretty similar chocolate brown colour. And we were able to pick it up at a very, very good price. And so when I started collecting Backman wagons years and years later, I can remember in the old Bolton Model Mart shop in uh, Bolton, and not long since started um, doing proper railway modelling, I would come out of university, got a reasonable job in the media, and suddenly it was a case of, you know what, I can buy whatever I want. And notionally, I was interested in the British Rail era, but I remember seeing this wagon amongst the wagons that they had for sale, brand new. And um, the SR Southern Railway really just, um, it, it rekindled that childhood love of these wagons because of their rarity. And I found myself buying this. And for a long time, this and the Queen Mary brake van were the only two wagons in the Backman range available in Southern Railway livery. And I remember that, um, uh, especially Great Western, strangely enough, was uh, there was quite a, a lot in the range. But Southern Railway was very neglected by Backman. And so I did always cherish this wagon. Subsequently, they've reissued it uh, with a different running number. And they've also issued... A good number of other wagons, uh, but of course, being the first, it still has a, a little place in my collection of uh, being a favourite. So, number seven, I've placed this Southern Railway Backman five plank wagon. Number six is our first entry from Hornby Railways, and it is their Shark Brake Fan. And this wagon is still, in my mind, one of the best wagons that has been brought to the market ready to run. Certainly in the Hornby range, this is something very special. And when they first brought it out, I picked up an olive green example, and uh, it was an unweathered version. But I do like the weathered one. They they do suit a little bit of weathering. So I subsequently got this wagon and it's the shark van in the olive green, but with a light factory applied weathering coat. And I really do just like this. It's got a great weight to it. And um, I've subsequently gone on to pick up quite a few of the shark brake vans in a number of different liveries. But uh, the olive green is one that I keep finding myself going back to again and again. So at number six, the Shark Brake Van, it's uh, a very well-deserved placing. And the first wagon in this list from Hornby. In number five in this series, um, I picked this wagon, actually. And you might be looking at this and going, well, I recognise a Backman wagon, but um, perhaps not recognising the livery. And that's because this was specially commissioned by Buffers in Axminster. And uh, they commissioned a, a number of, uh, sort of local themed wagons. But this particular one stood out to me because we're very used to the private owner wagons the, in the form of tanker wagons and open wagons. But uh, ventilated vans, probably few and far between. In fact, thinking along these lines, I can only think of a few that have ever been released from uh, Backman. So it was really nice to get this into the collection just to provide some variety into uh, freight trains 
it was a second release, I believe. Uh, they did bring out uh, a previous version as Wagon Number no. 1, and I guess it sold well enough that Wagon Number no. 2 was commissioned as a follow-up special commission. That's the point that I came across it and discovered it, so I never saw the, the number one wagon, as it were, uh, out there for sale. But I was very pleased to pick this up because I'm always glad to support um, local model shops that commission their own wagons and take that risk. And it is a big risk because I think the minimum order is um, just over 500. So you have to be pretty confident of, of selling that many wagons. So at number five, um, it's a good favourite of mine. It's an unusual livery and it does stand out. And there's just something about it for me. So there we have it. Number five. At number four, there's another brake van, but this time it comes from the Backman stable, and this is the air-piped van that came out as a, actually a model zone special commission, not long before they went bust, which is very unfortunate because model zone were probably one of the kings of commissioning some really quite interesting liveries on wagons, amongst other things. So this is the pretty standard uh, BR, X, L and ER type van. But um, they brought it out in this air pipe delivery. Now, the previous um, non-branch line version did get released in this livery, but this was the first time that uh, one of these sort of later livery vans uh, turned up um, in the sort of non-sectorization, but nonetheless with uh, some quite interesting liveries. And I remember seeing this and thinking, actually, you know what? I really want that. And... Uh, you know, you, sometimes you can't actually explain it. It just kind of, it reaches out and it touches you and you think, I like it. I can't explain it, but I like it. And that's, I suppose, is the simplistic story behind this van. So I'm um, really quite pleased to be able to put it into the list at number four. Number three in the list, I have to say, this is uh, one of my firm favourites. It's a wagon that was commissioned from Backman by TMC originally. It has now passed into the main range, but it's the horse box, the Mark I horse box. And again, this is another model that I remember quite fondly from my days with my father collecting Hornby Double O because they did a model of this in both the green and the maroon. And um, it was one of the very late super detail wagons, but it, it was actually quite a good wagon that they brought out. It even had opening doors and you could put a little miniature horse in it. It kind of had a little bit of play value going on, which was um, really quite an intricate wagon for all the way back in the 1960s. Well, finally, after a long, long wait, TMC announced in conjunction with Backman that they were bringing out this uh, wagon and they brought it out in a number of different running number examples uh, in double packs, single packs, both the uh, um, Midland region in the uh, maroon and southern region in the green. And um, it's one of the strange things. I did always wonder why only those two regions seem to be allocated their own dedicated examples. Um, but uh, I'm sure somebody would have an explanation for that. It's probably something to do with where the predominant traffic uh, was um, in terms of where the major race courses were. Now, they were a bit of a white elephant in real life because the um, travel of race horses by rail kind of ended very, very shortly after they were introduced. I think they only worked commercially through until the very early 1970s. But the, um, the Mark I horse boxes themselves were reasonable survivors because they passed on into departmental use in a lot of instances and were converted into generator vans and also tunnel inspection vehicles. So a number did pass um, onwards and into preservation through that route. There's also an example went to, I believe, the National Railway Museum and also Quainton Road uh, got an example straight out of service, uh, unconverted as a horse box. So they are out there. And if you look on the preserved vehicle registry, you can find there's quite a few either restored as horse boxes or um, I've seen them also converted to disabled carriages. So wheelchair accessible carriages as well for use on preserved railways. But when TMC announced this model, I thought, you know, actually, that is something I really want to hark back to the golden days of collecting Hornby Double O. 
So um, I was one of the first to line up to buy these and I've ended up with three examples. They did do a second production run and then subsequently they've been announced by Backman passing into the main range. Those of you that model N-Gage will also be familiar with this as I believe that uh, Graham Farish brought out this wagon also. But there we have it, the number three in my personal favourites list. Number two in my list, well you might be looking at this and going that's actually a little bit of an odd choice because that is pretty much um, the same wagon as you see behind it in the Arnold and Hancock livery of the Golden Hill Brewery and um, yes it is the same base wagon but I can't deny that I have a particular soft spot for Southern Railway wagons. I do love the chocolate brown and the white roofs and of course harking back to the fact that in Hornby 00 days they were very hard if not impossible to come by and uh, so whenever I see them I find myself picking them up and you know I model um, a lot of northern based things I model in the BR blue tops period so which is probably why you may be very surprised at some of these wagons that I've picked in my favorite top tens but it's one of those things sometimes I think we all have those kind of slightly guilty pleasures of wagons that we've decided that, you know, we don't need to justify them. We just, for some reason, we like them and we're having them for our collection. So I guess you could call this my guilty secret collection, some of these. But certainly there we have it at number two, the Backman plywood side ventilated wagon in the Southern Railway chocolate brown. So what could be at number one? So this is the bit where we recap the full list. So we can see right there at the back, at number 10, we have the TMC commissioned uh, Conflat based uh, Shunter's Runner match wagon. With those lovely wasp stripes, this wagon is equally at home as a runner with a class three or class four diesel shunter, or even I use them on the Grove Street Yard exhibition layout as uh, an internal user engineer's wagon. Next to that we have at number nine, the Acura Scale HUO Hopper Wagon. This wagon blew me away when I was sent one to review, I subsequently weathered it and it really brought it to the fore. There is pretty much nothing to fault with this wagon and I, I immediately found it being a firm favorite of mine. And that's why I have no qualms about having it in at number nine. At number eight, we have the special commission from Model Rail. And uh, this was the standard Backman plywood uh, BR vent van, but in the slightly more unusual olive green engineer's livery. I do love this livery and this wagon. It was one of the first that came out in that livery that was available. And even though the planked vent van has reappeared in this livery, I've not seen another plywood one and it still remains a firm favorite. At number seven, harking back to collecting Hornby 00, Southern Railway Open Wagon. It was my first ever item of Southern Railway rolling stock and it remains with me a favorite in my collection. At number six, we have the Hornby Shark Brake Van. Now this is an amazing model from Hornby. It is one of the jewels of their rolling stock collection. And um, here with a light dusting of factory applied weathering, it makes a perfect wagon even better. And so I have no qualms of putting this in at number six in my personal top 10 favorites. And at number five, we have the Arnold and Hancock Limited Golden Hill Brewery Wagon based on the Backman uh, Southern Railway uh, vent van with the plywood sides. And this is a beautiful wagon. It was commissioned specially by Buffers in Axminster as part of a range of wagons that they brought out on local prototypes. And I got this and uh, it just, it was just something very different and in my eyes something very different and eye-catching such as this can very quickly implant itself as being a favourite and uh, this wagon did manage to do just that so no qualms of putting this in at number five. Number four we're going back to the days of Model Zone and they commissioned this brake van from Backman and it's in an air pipe livery and uh, it's just very eye-catching and something a little bit different from the plain Borksite brown vans, which I had at that time in my collection. And uh, certainly suitable for a period earlier than some of the sectorization liveries, such as rail freight distribution. So it's a beautiful wagon. And as a brake van, 
I find it very useful in my collection, but it's also one which, I don't know, I can't explain it. I just really like it. So I've put that in at number four in my personal top 10. Number three, it's the uh, TMC originally commissioned from Backman Horse Box Mark 1, and I do love this wagon, so got it in at number three. At number two, we have the Southern Railway plywood side fan, appearing in the Southern Railway livery, and there's just something of great beauty for me about this wagon, so no hesitation in making this number two in my top ten personal favourite wagons. So here we have it, my number one favourite wagon in my entire collection. And you're probably looking at this and thinking, my God, I would never have guessed that. And it is actually based on quite an old wagon in the Backman range. The um, salt wagon with the cottage roof is probably one of the few survivors left from the pre-branch line range with the catalogue numbers that start with a 33 rather than a 37 or a 38. And in this particular livery with the very light green as snowdrift salt, I really do love this wagon. Now, green is my favourite colour, it has to be said, even though I modelled the BR blue period. Actually, I do quite like blue too. But uh, there's something about this wagon, and I don't normally go out of my way to collect private owner wagons, but this one is just so beautiful. I've actually ended up with two of these in my collection, and uh, it's quite a long story. The first one was bought for me by Zoe, and of course that immediately elevates it in my collection, being a present from my other half. And um, we bought it in the Model Zone in Manchester. Sadly, uh, Model Zone's no longer with us, uh, but it was a wagon I kept looking at longingly. And I remember thinking, no, I can't justify that. It is not a wagon that fits with my key modelling. But Zoe, well, she knows me too well. She went and secretly bought it as a present for me. And uh, it's taken pride of place in display cabinets ever since. Uh, unfortunately, when I was broken into out in the shed, and we've got a video on that, it was one of the wagons that was stolen. And um, I was really overwhelmed by the outpouring of love from a great number of you who were following me at that time. And I actually got sent uh, another Snowdrift Salt Wagon by somebody who obviously felt very sorry for the fact that one of my favourite wagons had been stolen. And um, I was really, really grateful to receive that at the time. Subsequently, the police were able to apprehend the villains <laughs> and recover an awful lot. In fact, most of my stolen rolling stock and locomotives. So I've ended up with two of these wagons, but uh, it just means I've got a spare backup because I really do love the livery on this wagon. And that makes it a very firm favourite at my number one favourite wagon in my entire collection. Well, I hope this video has been interesting to you, taking a little trip through my collection and picking out my top 10 favourite wagons. Now, um, I'm sure that you have your own set of 10 favourite wagons from your own personal collection, and really love to hear from you down in the comments section down below. And it'd be interesting to trade stories on why those wagons are your personal favourites in your collection. Do you agree with my top 10 list here? Or are there some wagons in here that you really can't get your head around why I've picked them for my top 10 favourites from a collection that numbers in the region of 500 wagons strong? Leave your comments down below. Love to hear from you. Thanks again for watching. It's been great having your company here up in the loft in Weir Yard. It's a little bit of an unusual Friday video. But uh, hey, there wasn't really any building progress to show. And I know a few people have been querying what my yeah, my favourite wagons might be. And uh, maybe at some point I'll go through my favourite coaching stock as well. I certainly do have some favourites tucked away in those. And I'm sure you might be interested to see them. But that's for a later video. But until next time, don't forget to like this video, share it too, and also if you want to support the channel and help me to make the videos that you want to see, then uh, you can also head on over to Patreon and uh, give us a support there. But until next time, you take really good care of yourself. And this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying thanks for watching. Bye for now. Today's video has been brought to you in part thanks to the generous donation of my fans on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to... Anthony Kidson, Michael Churchwood, Bob Threeton, Alec Ralph, Anthony Hunt, 
William Wade, Wayne Johns, Offshore Allen, and oorail.co.uk. If you'd like to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk. Thank you. Today's video has been brought to you by my books, Bringing Home the Stars, Twinkle Little Star, and also you can get the complete comic collections of All Over the House, Books 1, Books 2, and also the wacky zany Life of Knobty Mouse. Thanks and catch you later.